Many thanks, uh, Heike. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be back uh, to Berlin uh, after a long time. Um, in my presentation, I will focus on uh, some of the issues uh, covered by uh, Manuele. Uh, I, I will uh, focus uh, specifically on uh, the way that we can uh, analyze various climate uh, policy mixes by using an ecological SFC uh, approach. Um, so uh, we have in front of us uh, the uh, challenge to uh, we have in front of us uh, the uh, challenge of achieving uh, the target set by uh, the Paris Agreement. Uh, all of us know uh, that uh, we uh, need uh, an unprecedented decline in uh, greenhouse gas emissions in order to achieve this. Uh, we will not be able to have this uh, decline uh, without having a combination of various uh, policies. Uh, in um, broadly speaking, in the uh, climate economy uh, literature, um, uh, we have uh, seen uh, three different set of policies. The first set of uh, policies uh, refers to uh, green fiscal policy tools. Um, in the most conventional green fiscal policy tool uh, refers to environmental taxes, and in particular in carbon taxes. Um, the idea of the carbon taxes is that uh, firms or households uh, have uh, to pay uh, when they produce emissions. Uh, as a result, they are induced uh, to uh, reduce their own emissions. Another uh, fiscal uh, policy tool uh, refers uh, to green subsidies. So uh, firms have, um, are receiving uh, subsidies when they invest, uh, for example, uh, in green energy. Uh, we also have a green public investment. Um, for example, uh, companies, uh, sorry, uh, the government uh, might invest uh, in uh, transportation and also uh, in energy efficiency buildings. Uh, so this was uh, the first uh, set of policies. The second set of policies refers to the financial system. Uh, this includes the uh, decarbonized quantitative easing, uh, in, uh, whereby uh, central banks uh, buy uh, more uh, green bonds compared to carbon intensive bonds. Uh, this set of policies also includes uh, financial regulation. Uh, for uh, some uh, have uh, mentioned uh, that um, banks uh, need to hold more capital when they provide uh, more uh, dirty loans. Uh, so as a result, they might be induced to re uh, decrease uh, their lending to the dirty sector. Uh, the third set of policies uh, refers to environmental regulation, uh, and which uh, can have a direct uh, effect on how firms can use uh, their own uh, resources, material and energy resources. Uh, within this um, area, uh, we also have uh, what uh, sometimes we call the transition to sufficiency. Uh, this uh, refers uh, to a change in consumption patterns uh, that uh, primarily uh, can be done by uh, the global north countries. So we have these three set of uh, policies in order to deal with uh, climate change. Uh, the first two set of policies refer uh, to a green growth, while uh, the last one uh, generally uh, refers to uh, post growth. Uh, we uh, know uh, that there are uh, many uh, papers that have analyzed separately these uh, policies. Um, there are, uh, we have some recent papers uh, that uh, have uh, investigated uh, the combination of uh, some of these policies. We are now at a stage uh, in which uh, we uh, want to analyze uh, more uh, the uh, various uh, the policy mixes. Uh, so in my presentation, I'm going to uh, show you uh, how we can, the effects of various uh, policy mixes, and uh, I'm going also to try to evaluate these uh, policy mixes. So uh, from an ecological uh, post-Kensian uh, SFC perspective, in order to evaluate uh, these uh, policies that I mentioned before, we need to uh, look into uh, various indicators. And I have listed some of them on the slide. Uh, so uh, first, uh, we have that climate change affect the financial system. Uh, we know uh, that uh, climate uh, catastrophes, uh, climate change can affect adversely uh, the rate of default. And as a result, uh, we uh, might have uh, this uh, negative uh, feedback uh, macrofinancial loops. 
Um, also, we know uh, that uh, specific policies such as carbon taxes can affect the ability of the firms uh, or uh, the households to uh, repay the debt. Uh, so this might create uh, financial instability. Um, we uh, know that in uh, post-Keynesian SFC models, we have uh, that demand plays a key role. Um, however, from a post-Keynesian, uh, sorry, from an ecological uh, perspective, uh, the supply uh, side uh, is also important because climate change affects uh, the labor productivity. Uh, it can also reduce the number of people that can be employed, can also uh, destroy capital. Uh, from uh, a post uh, perspective, uh, we uh, know that fiscal and monetary policies have hysteresis effects. Uh, so uh, the post keynesian SFC uh, models that rely on the uh, post keynesian tradition are suitable in order to uh, investigate the effects of, of uh, climate, fiscal, and monetary uh, policies. Uh, from an ecological perspective, uh, we know that resources are important. Uh, so, um, in uh, stock flow uh, consistent models, we don't only analyze the stock flow consistency of uh, the monetary system, we also uh, take into account uh, the stock flow uh, consistency uh, that refers to resources, in particular uh, matter. Uh, in order to evaluate uh, these uh, policies, uh, we uh, need to rely on uh, various indicators uh, that focus uh, not only on the macroeconomy, but also take into account social aspects, uh, the uh, financial performance of firms, uh, banks, and of course uh, also uh, ecological indicators. So. Um, uh, in order to illustrate uh, some of these uh, policies, uh, I will use, and uh, the effect of these uh, policies, I will use a specific uh, model that I have uh, co-developed. So first, I'm going to explain uh, the key characteristics of uh, this model. Uh, then I'll show you uh, the baseline scenario that we have, uh, which is in line with uh, the whole house of world scenario. And then I will focus on uh, various effects of uh, individual and uh, policy uh, mixes. And at the end, I will uh, mention some areas for future research. So um, the model uh, that uh, I have uh, co-developed with uh, Yanis Dafemos and Yorgos Galanis is uh, called DEFINE. DEFINE stands for Dynamic Ecosystem Finance Economy. Um, with the, in this model, we have two different uh, blocks. Within each block, we have uh, various sub-blocks. So we pay particular attention to energy and matter. Uh, we also consider the effects of emissions on atmospheric temperature and climate damages, and uh, also uh, take into account uh, efficiency indicators and uh, they include uh, learning by doing. Within the macroeconomy, we have five different sectors. So firms take out loans uh, in order uh, to finance uh, their investment. Uh, banks uh, provide these loans. Uh, firms also uh, use uh, bonds in order to finance their activities. Uh, these bonds can be bought uh, by households and also by uh, central banks. We also have a separate uh, module on uh, the way that we uh, determine output. Uh, in uh, our model, we have four different matrices in order to take into account uh, the complex interactions between the macroeconomy and the ecosystem. Um, the first two uh, matrices refer to the standard SFC uh, matrices like the balance sheet matrix and uh, the transaction flow matrix. On the slide, you can see uh, the balance sheet matrix of our model, which shows the assets and liabilities in the macroeconomy. Uh, in uh, DEFINE, we also uh, have two other matrices that refer to physical flows and stocks. Uh, so uh, we have energy that is measured in exajoules and matter in gigatons. So in this way, uh, we combine the literature uh, on uh, SFC models that draws on uh, the work of uh, Wynne Godley uh, and uh, Mark Lavoie and uh, the work uh, done by uh, Georges Kuroikin. Uh, let me uh, clarify some of the key characteristics of uh, DEFINE. Uh, we pay particular attention to uh, the way through which uh, credit is provided. Uh, so uh, we do that uh, by having both uh, price and quantity credit rationing. So in other words, uh, banks uh, provide only a proportion of loans. And we also have uh, that uh, interest rate change in an endogenous way. Uh, we uh, take into account uh, not only the demand side, but also that supply constraints uh, might arise as well. Uh, as a result, we are able to incorporate uh, climate damages that affect uh, not only the supply side, which is uh, typical in uh, mainstream models, uh, but also the demand side, which is uh, the consumption and investment. 
so uh, let me uh, show you some of the uh, interactions uh, that take place uh, in our model. Uh, so uh, when we have uh, an increase in economic activity, uh, we have an increase in uh, CO2 emissions. So this uh, will uh, increase uh, atmospheric temperature uh, and uh, increase uh, damages. As a result, economic activity will go down because uh, consumption and investment uh, will become uh, lower. However, this decline in economic activity will affect the ability of the firms to repay the debt, so the debt service will go up, and as a result, uh, we might have an increase in the rate of default. So climate change affects uh, the financial system. Of course, this has also a uh, feedback uh, loops, so uh, banks uh, might be affected as well, and we also might have uh, less uh, green investment. Also, uh, the uh, cl climate change uh, can also interact with a lower profitability, and as a result, uh, households uh, might change the portfolio composition. Uh, so households might not be uh, willing uh, in order to hold risky assets, such as uh, green bonds. Uh, they might be more willing to hold uh, safe assets, such as government securities. As a result of this, uh, we might have a decline in the price of our corporate bonds, and uh, the yield of bonds might go up. So uh, because of climate change, uh, firms might experience an increase in their costs. Uh, let me uh, now show you uh, the way uh, through which uh, we uh, construct our baseline scenario. Uh, first, uh, we use uh, a combination of calibration and estimation uh, for uh, our parameters. Uh, in particular, uh, we uh, econometric econometrically estimate uh, some of the parameters of our behavioral uh, equations, such as investment and consumption. Uh, since uh, our model is uh, global, we uh, use uh, PAN data for the global economy in order to do so. Uh, we uh, start our simulations in 2018, and uh, we uh, we run the model for about 100 years. Uh, then uh, we uh, take into account uh, the two SSPC, SSP2, uh, and SSP3 uh, scenarios. These are the shared socioeconomic pathways uh, that uh, have been used by uh, the IPCC. Um, so uh, we take into account these uh, scenarios in order to uh, construct our uh, base Scenario. So at the end uh, of the century in our simulations, we have a uh, temperature uh, close to 3 uh, degrees Celsius. So, so as a result, this scenario is called this hot house uh, world scenario. Uh, just uh, to mention that we also take into account uh, that uh, the effects of COVID in the first years. So uh, with this slide, uh, you can see uh, some uh, of uh, the variables uh, that we have in our baseline scenario. Uh, the, we have a decline in uh, economic growth uh, in the first years, which is in line with the SSP2. Uh, uh, and as a result, there is a decline in the unemployment rate. Uh, in line with the uh, SSP3, uh, there is an improvement uh, in efficiency indicators. Uh, so there is an improvement in the share of uh, non-fossil energy and energy uh, intensity. Um, but this so shows that there is a transition to a low carbon economy, but this transition is extremely slow. And as a result, we get this three degrees Celsius uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, we uh, also uh, conduct uh, some uh, validation exercises uh, in our model. Happy to uh, discuss uh, this uh, if uh, you would like. Um, but uh, let me just show you uh, the uh, way through which output and the default uh, rate uh, are determined in our baseline scenario. So uh, if you have a look at uh, this uh, dotted uh, green line, it shows uh, the uh, increase in economic activity without the damages. When we take into account the climate damages uh, in our model, we obviously see that there is a decline in economic activity. Obviously, this decline in economic activity affects the ability of the borrowers uh, to pay their debt, and as a result, we have this increase in the rate of default. So these are uh, some of uh, the basic uh, elements of our uh, baseline uh, scenario. Uh, 
Uh, let me now uh, show you some of the effects of uh, climate policies that we have. I'll start with the green fiscal policies, uh, and then uh, we'll touch upon uh, other policies as well and initiatives. Uh, so uh, first, we implement these uh, policies in 2022. Uh, we have three different scenarios. In the first one, we increase uh, carbon taxes, uh, which are in line with the SSP3 4.5 scenario. So we have a gradual uh, increase in uh, carbon taxes. Then in the second scenario, we uh, combine carbon taxes with green subsidies. So this is in line with the recycling of revenues. And in the third scenario, uh, we investigate an increase in green public investment. Um, before I show you some of the results of uh, these policies, I would like uh, to emphasize that uh, there is a lot of uh, literature, an extensive literature, uh, that has investigated uh, these uh, policies. Uh, these are not only uh, SFC uh, models. Uh, there are also agent-based models and mainstream models. I have listed only some of them uh, on the slide. Uh, but I would like also to highlight that uh, the majority of them primarily focus on carbon taxes and uh, do not uh, pay so much attention to uh, green public investment. Okay. So hopefully you will be able to see some of the graphs uh, that I have on the slide. Um, or the uh, black line uh, shows what's happening in uh, the baseline scenario, and uh, the other line shows uh, the effects of uh, different policies. So uh, when we uh, implement uh, carbon taxes, uh, you can see that there is a decline in the growth rate of output. Uh, this is because uh, firms have to pay more taxes, and as a result, the profitability goes down. Uh, gradually uh, the profitability and economic growth due to lower investment becomes lower and lower. But as you can see, at some point, there is a turning point. This is because uh, firms uh, gradually invest uh, in a green capital. As a result, they have uh, less emissions, so they have to pay less for the taxes. And as a result, their uh, profits uh, goes up. So uh, at some point, they are able to invest more, and we have this in increase uh, in economic activity, in the growth rate of output. Uh, so uh, this cyclicality that you can see here can be avoided if we combine carbon taxes with uh, the uh, green subsidies. So this is the recycling of revenue that I mentioned before. So we cannot have uh, these uh, cycles at the beginning, and at the end, uh, the growth rate of output is better <coughs> compared uh, to uh, the baseline scenario. When we have uh, green public investment, uh, we don't have any of uh, this uh, cyclicality, any of uh, these uh, problems. Uh, this is because green public investment directly affects uh, economic activity. Uh, again, uh, the default uh, rate uh, when we implement a carbon taxes increases, uh, which is in line with the climate emissions moment that Emanuele uh, mentioned before. Uh, when uh, we have this recycling of revenue, we don't have something similar. And with uh, green public investment, in reality, the default rate becomes uh, lower compared to the baseline. I suppose. You would expect that when we have this implementation of carbon taxes, uh, you would expect that the debt to GDP uh, becomes uh, lower. Uh, and when we have the uh, green public investment, the debt to GDP uh, should uh, become uh, higher. In our simulations, this is not the case. So when we have a carbon taxes, uh, yes, at the beginning, we have an improvement uh, in a fiscal uh, deficit. However, at the same time, we have this decline in economic activity. So uh, this decline uh, in economic activity overcompensates this uh, positive effect uh, on uh, the fiscal deficit. And as a result, at the beginning, we have this uh, higher public debt to GDP compared to the baseline. Uh, when we implement uh, the green public investment, the debt to GDP goes down. Uh, this is because uh, economic activity is uh, more important uh, compared to the increase in debt. Atmospheric temperature, this is what we get in the baseline scenario, as I mentioned earlier. As you can see, when we implement carbon taxes, we have, obviously, a reduction in atmospheric temperature. Uh, when we combine it with uh, green subsidies, uh, the uh, atmospheric temperature becomes even lower. And obviously, with public investment, we have uh, a decline in atmospheric temperature as well. Now. I would like to evaluate uh, these different policies, uh, and I'm trying 
uh, to, um, in order to do this, uh, instead of relying on only one indicator, like the welfare, which is the case in mainstream uh, models, uh, I will uh, use a uh, different set of indicators. This is uh, possible because we can do that uh, in heterodox uh, macro modeling. So in this way, we are able to capture both the risks and opportunities uh, that might arise because of uh, various uh, policies. Um, so uh, these different set of indicators allow us to capture these complex uh, interactions that take place between the macroeconomy and the ecosystem. Oh, on the slide, you can see I have highlighted three different set of indicators. Uh, the first one is linked with the performance of uh, firms, of banks, and of the government sector. Uh, there is another set of indicators that refers to the way through which the uh, macroeconomy evolves, and we also take into account functional income distribution. Uh, and lastly, we have a last, uh, set of indicators that obviously focus on uh, climate change, but also we take into account uh, the waste per capita which is linked with uh, resources. Uh, if you focus only uh, on carbon taxes, um, yes, I forgot to, uh, 60. So, I need to be quick, I suppose. Uh, okay. Have many policies. That's a problem. But okay. So uh, okay. So uh, as I was saying, um, we have uh, all of these indicators, uh, both evaluated in the short term and in the long term. When we have this uh, red color, we show that there is a deterioration of the indicator. Uh, when we have this green color, it is an improvement in the indicator. And this, uh, let's say, gold orange uh, color uh, shows that uh, the uh, there is a deterioration deterioration, but not so much. So when we focus on carbon taxes, uh, you can see that uh, we uh, not only have this increase in the default rate, also uh, the uh, leverage ratio of banks, so the performance of the banking sector is suspected as well. We have all, all an increase uh, in the unemployment rate and a deterioration in uh, functional income uh, distribution as well. We don't have that uh, when, uh, when we combine carbon taxes with green subsidies. Uh, when we have green public investment, as you can see, there are no problems as well. The only problem that we have is that at some point at the end of our simulations, the waste per capita becomes higher than the baseline. So this is because we have a large increase in economic activity, so uh, resources uh, start uh, becoming uh, lower. Uh, the, set, uh, the second set of policies uh, that I would like to focus uh, is on monetary and financial. Uh, so in the first one, um, I employ what we call the dirty penalizing factor. So in this case, uh, banks uh, hold uh, need to hold more uh, capital when they provide uh, dirty loans. Uh, with the uh, green supporting factor, uh, banks are able to hold less uh, capital when they uh, give more green loans. As a result, they are in used uh, to provide uh, more green loans and less uh, dirty ones. Uh, we also uh, investigate the effects of the uh, green quantitative easing. So we assume that central banks around the world will increase the proportion of uh, green bonds uh, that they hold. Um, maybe I could skip uh, this um, and I can show you uh, this one, uh, which shows the effects on the growth rate of output. Uh, so when we have this dirty penalizing factor, uh, there is a small decline in the growth rate of output compared to the baseline scenario. Uh, this is because uh, less uh, dirty lending uh, is provided. Uh, with a green supporting factor and the green quantitative easing, there is a small increase in the growth rate of output, uh, but as you can see, it's very small. Uh, there is a decline in atmospheric temperature, but obviously these individual policies uh, cannot reach uh, the 1.5 and 2 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, again, I have uh, the same set of indicators in order to evaluate uh, these uh, policies. Um, when we uh, look at the green supporting factor, we can see that there is an increase in the leverage ratio of banks, which means uh, that uh, banks uh, might experience an increase in their financial fragility. This is because they hold less capital. Uh, with the debt penalizing factor, we don't have uh, something like that, but we have other problems not only linked with a higher default rate, uh, but also an increase in unemployment. With green 
during quantitative easing, generally there are not uh, so many problems, uh, but as you can see, in all cases, the atmospheric temperature just changes moderately. So uh, only uh, using monetary financial policies will not be uh, enough to reach uh, the uh, Paris Agreement uh, targets. Uh, the other set of policies uh, that I have uh, incorporated uh, and I would like to show, to share with you uh, are linked with uh, environmental regulation and uh, the changing consumption patterns. So in the first scenario, uh, we investigate how uh, a decline in uh, consumption uh, can affect uh, our uh, variables in the model. And we uh, understand that obviously this reduction in consumption uh, can increase substantially unemployment. So uh, at the same time, we also uh, reduce uh, uh, working hours. Uh, and we do that uh, after 2022. We have two uh, different scenarios that focus on energy regulation. So uh, in 2022, uh, there is this announcement uh, by uh, policymakers uh, that capital uh, will be stranded in 2030, so uh, a bit later. Uh, we have two different scenarios because in the first one, we assume that actually uh, the firms uh, will not uh, do anything uh, because they don't think that the policy is credible. Uh, and the other policy which is linked with this uh, forward looking that Emanuele mentioned before, uh, we have that firms are going to react uh, when this policy is uh, announced. Uh, and uh, Emanuele uh, and uh, Danz and Monastrola have also worked on these uh, forward looking expectations uh, scenarios. Um, so uh, I don't, I'm not sure I have a lot of time in order to go through uh, all of these uh, slides. So uh, just to mention that uh, when we focus on uh, the first scenario, the reduction in uh, consumption and working hours, uh, you can see that we have this uh, decline in uh, the working hours. Uh, this allows uh, the unemployment uh, not uh, to increase a lot, but obviously there is a decline in uh, the growth rate of output. Output. When we have the energy regulation scenarios, uh, the one that uh, firms uh, do not uh, react, you can see that at the beginning there is an increased economic activity. This is because firms in uh, 2030 try to increase their green investment, but then uh, the next year we have a reduction in profitability. This is because of the stranded assets uh, that they have. When we implement uh, this uh, forward-looking uh, scenario, uh, so firms are able to increase the green investment a bit earlier, and as a result, we avoid these uh, transitions uh, that we have uh, here. Um, so I just wanted to show you with uh, the rate of profit uh, of the firms as well that we have uh, these effects of the, the stranded assets, uh, but an overall uh, atmospheric uh, temperature declines uh, by using both or three of these uh, scenarios. And when we have the forward-looking expectations, we have an even uh, larger uh, generally larger decline in atmospheric temperature. Again, I have uh, evaluated uh, these uh, policies. Um, when we have uh, the reduction in consumption patterns, in consumption, sorry, and the reduction in working hours, uh, many problems arise, uh, not only with the unemployment rate and functional income distribution, also we have that the banking sector is uh, affected as well. Uh, when we have only uh, regulation that is uh, where in which case companies uh, do not uh, react, uh, we have uh, some similar problems as well. Some of these problems uh, are able uh, to be uh, addressed uh, when we have these uh, forward-looking uh, scenarios. So in particular, the uh, banking sector, the default rate, uh, do not increase. Uh, lastly, and then with this I will uh, stop, uh, we just have uh, used these different uh, set of policies. In the first one, we have this regulation, the forward-looking regulation scenario that I mentioned before, also this decline in uh, consumption and the decline in working hours. Then on top of it, we have uh, fiscal policies, um, green public investment, carbon taxes, and green subsidies. And in the third scenario, we add uh, the uh, financial uh, policies as well. 
let me just show you this. Um, so this is the baseline scenario. When we have the combination of regulation efficiency, you can see that there is uh, an improvement in atmospheric temperature. When we add uh, the role of fiscal policies, this atmo decline in atmospheric temperature becomes even higher. Uh, and as you expect, the role of the financial policies is not so uh, important. Um, you might remember that I mentioned that when we have this green fiscal policy and also with the uh, regulation uh, policies, we have some problems with the waste per capita. These problems are resolved when uh, we uh, combine them. Uh, and I'm going to skip that, and I would like to uh, finish with that. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I would just uh, like to uh, conclude with some areas for future research. Uh, so uh, we already know that the climate change affects the uh, ability of the households to repay the debt, and we also know that the housing market will be affected as well. So it would be interesting to uh, have a more thorough investigation of uh, the effects of climate change on mortgages. I agree with what Emanuele said that it is important uh, to take into account forward-looking expectations. Um, in uh, the model, I just show you a very simple way on how to incorporate forward-looking expectations. Of course, more research needs to be done towards this direction. Um, many uh, models, uh, and I need to stop, uh, many models, uh, just to clarify this one, that our model is a global one. Obviously, we need country-specific models in order to take into account the effects of climate. And I finish with that. Many okay. thanks for your attention.